and the readings will now be given by Elizabeth from Georgia. The Bible, Psalms. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Second Chronicles Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him, and magnified him exceedingly. And Solomon determined to build an house for the name of the Lord, and an house for his kingdom. Behold, I build an house to the name of the Lord my God, to dedicate it to him, and to burn before him sweet incense, and for the continual showbread, and for the burnt offerings morning and evening on the Sabbath, and on the new moons, and on the solemn feast of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. And the house which I build is great, for great is our God above all gods. And he made the most holy house, the length whereof was according to the breadth of the house, twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof twenty cubits. And he overlaid it with fine gold, amounting to six hundred talents. Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished, and Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated, and the silver, and the gold, and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto Jerusalem, to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is Zion. And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel, and spread forth his hands, and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in the heaven, nor in the earth, which keepest covenant, and showest mercy unto thy servants, that walk before thee with all their hearts. That thine eyes may be open upon this house day and night, upon the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldst put thy name there, to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth, toward this place. Now, my God, let, I beseech thee, thine eyes be open, and let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord God, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation. And let thy saints rejoice in goodness. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. 1 Corinthians for the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. Whether therefore ye eat, or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. He that glorieth, let him glory 
in the Lord. I will read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. We should consecrate existence, not to the unknown God whom we ignorantly worship, but to the eternal builder, the everlasting father, to the life which mortal sense cannot impair, nor mortal belief destroy. Question. What are the demands of the science of soul? Answer. The first demand of this science is, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. This me is spirit. Therefore, the command means this. Thou shalt have no intelligence, no life, no substance, no truth, no love, but that which is spiritual. Having no other gods, turning to no other but the one perfect mind to guide him, man is the likeness of God, pure and eternal, having that mind which was also in Christ. Since God is love and infinite, why should mortals conceive of a law, propound a question, formulate a doctrine, or speculate on the existence of anything which is an antipode of infinite love and the manifestation thereof? The sacred command Thou shalt have no other gods before me, silences all questions on this subject, and forever forbids the thought of any other reality, since it is impossible to have aught unlike the infinite. The knowledge of life, substance, or law, apart or other than God, good, is forbidden. Good demands of man every hour in which to work out the problem of being. Consecration to good does not lessen man's dependence on God, but heightens it. Neither does consecration diminish man's obligations to God, but shows the paramount necessity of meeting them. Christian science takes not from the perfection of God, but it ascribes to him the entire glory. We cannot fathom the nature and quality of God's creation by diving into the shallows of mortal belief. We must reverse our feeble flutterings, our efforts to find life and truth in matter, and rise above the testimony of the material senses above the mortal to the immortal idea of God. These clearer, higher views inspire the godlike man to reach the absolute center and circumference of his being. The divine being must be reflected by man, else man is not the image and likeness of the patient, tender, and true the one altogether lovely. But to understand God is the work of eternity and demands absolute consecration of thought, energy, and desire. How empty are our conceptions of deity? We admit theoretically that God is good, omnipotent, omnipresent, infinite, and then we try to give information to this infinite mind. We plead for unmerited pardon and for a liberal outpouring of benefactions. Are we really grateful for the good already received? Then we shall avail ourselves of the blessings we have and thus be fitted to receive more. Gratitude is much more than a verbal expression of thanks. Action expresses more gratitude than speech. What we most need is the prayer of fervent desire 
for growth in grace expressed in patience, meekness, love, and good deeds. It is not alone the mission of Christian science to heal the sick, but to destroy sin in mortal thought. This work well done will elevate and purify the race. It cannot fail to do this if we devote our best energies to the work. Never was there a more solemn and imperious call than God makes to us all right here for fervent devotion and an absolute consecration to the greatest and holiest of all causes. The hour is come. The great battle of Armageddon is upon us. The powers of evil are leagued together in secret conspiracy against the Lord and against his Christ, as expressed and operative in Christian science. Large numbers, in desperate malice, are engaged day and night in organizing action against us. Their feeling and purpose are deadly, and they have sworn enmity against the lives of our standard bearers. What will you do about it? Will you be equally in earnest for the truth? Will you doff your lavender kid zeal and become real and consecrated warriors? Will you give yourselves wholly and irrevocably to the great work of establishing the truth, the gospel, and the science which are necessary to the salvation of the world from error, sin, disease, and death? Answer at once and practically and answer aright. Amen. 